Hi, welcome to Live on KEXP at Home. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I'm so excited about these live sessions that we've been able to do from Artist's Home. I'm here at my own home as well, and today we welcome Gabriel Garcon Montano. Hi, Gabriel. Hi. It's so great to see you. Look at you. You're in the studio. I heard you just finished rehearsal. Yep. We're in here for the first time in a while. It feels really good to play. I bet. It feels good to be back with your band members and uh, making music. We all miss live music so much right now. Oh, I know. The beautiful new album, Aguita. Oh, my heart. And you were kind enough to record an exclusive KEXB session for us. It is very, very special. Let's watch that now, okay? Stop flirting 
tried his luck once or twice, but it ain't working. Things done change from when he was a little baby. Long gone are the days of fighting old lady. Everything is everything. Well, 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 well. Go out and play, never mind the rain. You're making it, this baby don't complain Everything is everything Oh, oh, I guess you know me well I don't like winter I seem to get a kick out of doing you cold Oh, what the hell, you always surrender To see you sad uh, And baby if you let me I just might do something rash And what's this strange relationship Shit, 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 shit Was a strange relationship. You've been gone seventeen days and seventeen long nights. The main drag is no wonder. You're holding someone else tight Nobody loved me before Please Please Let the rain come down Let the rain come down, down let the rain come down, the rain come down, let the rain come mm -mm. Nobody loved me before to taste your sweet perfume Lord, all you ever do Wipe the blue from your fruits and leaves Carefully It's all you see And baby breathe Especially Wipe the bloom from your fruits and leaves Carefully Tenderly 
mind the glare blank is all you see oh, Baby breathe, especially Se me de gotita, agüita, agüita Lo que estamos activos movemos la pierna en neguita Un pasito muy fino y flota divino De mi mami el estilo todito caliente me salto los tibios Agüita, agüita, me llueve en diosita Las más finas agitas me caen distintas gracias a la vida Es que soy un berraco salvaje, pero suave chinchila Me meto a rumba con tacón en pie, a veces me maquilla Se me acerca una nena chimbita, lo pegamos enseguida Un pasito, tum, tum, ey, hacemos la vuelta, agüita, agüita Recuerdo los tiempos difíciles cuando yo no tenía Ando en bamba otro día que frío a la nube de pulmonía Diferente la pinta, salpican gotita Agüita, 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 agüita La lluvia bendita, las lágrimas limpias Agüita, 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 agüita Diferente la pinta Salpican gotita, agüita, 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 agüita. La lluvia bendita, la lágrima limpia. Agüita, 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 agüita. Ana Caona. Linda de raza cautiva Ana Caona De la región primitiva Ana Caona oí la voz Cuando lloró cuanto gimió Ana Caona oí la voz De tu angustiado corazón Tu libertad nunca llegó De... Anacaona, arreto de Anacaona. Anacaona, arreto de Anacaona. Anacaona, arreto de Anacaona. Anacaona, linda de raza cautiva. Anacaona. De la región primitiva Todo tiene su final Nada dura para siempre Tenemos que recordar Que no existe eternidad y no hay problema en el barrio de quien se llama el malo. Si dicen que no soy yo, le doy un puño de regalo. Quien se llama el malo, no hay ni discusión. El malo de aquí soy yo, porque tengo corazón. Thank you.
baby, un diez bebé. Después que nos cruzamos pensé, que rico como tú te mueves. Y ojalá te pueda convertir en mí, baby, 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 sweet baby, sweet. Que rico como tú te mueves. Ojalá te pueda convertir en mi baby sleep, baby sleep, sleep, Thank you for having me. Happy Pride. I love you. And we'll see each other very soon. A lot of things popping. Gabriel Garzón Montano, out. We're live on KEXP at Home. I'm Cheryl Waters here with Gabriel Garzón Montano. Uh, thank you for that incredible performance. So beautiful and so thoughtful. You really put something incredible together. That was such an amazing review. I'd say of your body of work, you featured tw tracks off Aguita, Jardín, also Bichonne, Alma del Huila. What story were you hoping to tell with that performance? It was really unique and special. It's, uh, it's just a tour of the things I'm into. And um, I like to plan my sets with some structure. And then I have piles that I can draw upon. And I do love to throw myself curveballs and um, maybe put together some things I've never played together before. And uh, that works really well when it's like just planing chords, just downbeats. Um, but like w when I did um, El Malo over Spanish Joint, that was like a joke, like a comment on the, the titling of that track. And uh, yeah. It's for me, that's some of the most fun I have is like improvising in that setting. So it was a total joy. I'm, I'm, I was I was excited that you guys asked me to to get down in the quarantine mode. Joy is a perfect word for that. Not only is it very joyful to watch it, but you could tell how much you were enjoying it and the joy that you had. I mean, you were in it there. Um, 100 <laughs> percent. I loved it. And. You've woven some wonderful artists into your set among those songs, among your songs. Um, iconic salsa and bolero musicians are in there. Uh, Cheo Feliciano, uh, Hector Lavo, and Willie Colon in there. I mean, you're really drawing from some really incredible influences there. Also, you brought Moses Sumney and Prince in, right? Uh, I feel like you can trace inspirations from each of these artists throughout your music. Tell me about the influence of some of those artists on you. Well, can you, can you choose one? Oh, Prince. Okay, let's just talk about Prince. Yeah, I mean, he's an icon, right? I mean, well, they're all icons in their own way. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, to me, with Prince, he's just, he, he, he's, he's the, the most explosive star in, in a constellation that goes from uh, Ray Charles to Sly Stone to Prince. And for me, it's just something like personal. That's the way I see it. I see this like idiomatic continuity with all of them. And um, after Prince, you have D'Angelo. Oh. And they all just draw for me and many other geniuses of, of their respective generations utilize these specific ways of framing ideas and they like pass the funky torch 
You got Andre three thousand also to to temper. He's a he's a way less church produced continuation of that line. Like D'Angelo is clearly coming from church music, and Andre is is more extra terrestrial. They're both aliens though, and unicorns <laughs> at the same time. Um, and then so then you have Hector Lavoe is like Bad Bunny to me, right? Sly Stone is Travis Scott to me. It's this. You know, you got the name plate, you know, doing it before you had before you before Bootsy, you know, before hip hop, before Grandmaster Flash or before like big chains and, and name plates. Sly Stone is, 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 is like this kind of like space cowboy. I love that you've just given us a history of some of the best music <laughs> that's ever been. Um, you had that Moses Sumney and Prince mashup. And I adore Moses Sumney. I think he's going to be an icon one day. He's an icon of, of kind already. Um, you've spoken about him in more than one interview, and I see a lot of similarities in your artistic sensibilities. His visual aesthetic, just like yours, is absolutely arresting. Um, he produces his own videos, which I love. And you have an incredible artistic vision as well, both in your music and um, the visual aspect of your art, the videos, your album covers, also your fashion, much like Moses. Um, you look amazing in the video that we just watched. You have that beautiful suit. You had a sort of a similar pink suit in Muñeca, the video mm. for that one. I want to talk a little bit about um, the visual aspect especially in your videos, which I've been watching three videos that I've seen from Aguita over and over again. Tell me about making those and, and just the art in general, visually behind your music. I guess it's a product of all the books and museums I've been to and just the opportunity to use my eyes. And um, I think to the extent that I'm moved by something, by an offering, I'll incorporate that into my work. Do you want to talk about making any video in particular or any aspect of this, like the, what went into making one of them? Well, Aguita is a very powerful video, and okay. um, I'd love to talk about the making of that one. With pleasure. So what? Um, so some, you, you have Art Camp di directing. You had Canada as, as a um, big, big, big reference here, the, the director. And um, I remember basically the way I create work is just setting limits. And the better informed you are about how you set those and what game you're playing, what the parameters are, what the rules are, the more turned on you're going to get. So it's like, I was like, all right, we need to, this is a visual event. So we're talking there's shapes, there's colors, and there's how fast they move, and there's like whatever. That's basically what we're looking at. That's it. Space and time. So I was like, all right, we need some colors. I want to do, I was like, ooh, white. It's going to look beautiful in the sun. It's just like, ah, okay. Baby blue. Because we really liked the idea of putting me against the sky. So I was like, okay, I'll match. And then yellow is this character, this, this vitality. In the same way that pink and, and lime green are the characters in Muñeca. And um, to a completely different palette. You have a lot, like, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do a different look for each video. Um, so yeah, someone v very soft, very pastel, like filmic in terms of just like the medium. And um, Aguita still looks like film, but like still sharper. Um, you have cook lenses. You have steady cam. You have big crew. So, and then sometimes it's, it's just four of us wading through the river trying not to, to mess up the Ari. So that was a big way that I contributed. And then it was just about performance and what the active ingredients in my performance and my body language are. And then we put me in situations and I just did my thing. So 
it never it never used to be this cold or simple for me to make a visual presentation. Usually the conversation started and ended with, oh, what to do? I'm ugly. And that was it. You know, like feeling a certain way about yourself or like being like, ugh. Like even if even if I'm okay with and I, and I and I and I like myself and and I like the way I look or whatever it might be, it still is a kind of a drag to put yourself in front of a camera for like 16 hours a day for five days when like when everyone tells you this is what you're good at. So, but then that was where I used to come from, <laughs> and now I'm like I'm I'm gonna eat this up. So we created uh, notches of like calmness for my performances. So they'd be like, give me a zero, give me a one, give me a two. And then we capped it at three, which had four stations. You know, when you're watching that four or five minute video as a viewer who's just loving every minute of it and eating it up, you forget that it's like a 16 hour day. I mean, you don't look fatigued at all. You are present in every moment of that. You look like you're absolutely enjoying it. You're a hundred percent committed to it. I mean, it's sort of incredible to think about, you know, what it takes to come out with just a few minutes of art like that. <laughs> yeah, it was like a five, six month process. That's amazing. Uh, uh, where, where do the clothes come from? I mean, I love your fashion sense. It's incredible. The clothes, they'll come from anywhere. They'll come from um, the wholesale spot in, in Midtown, like in the garment district. Hi. Hi. So it's like what we're doing right now. This is 100% cotton, though, and I'm paying, like, nothing. And then also, I'll go to thrift stores. Um, yeah, there's a couple great ones. I love the, the Front Street General Store. Those are the homies. And, and the, their creation is impeccable. It's, it's gorgeous, everything they have. You really feel like everything you're holding is a work of art. It's special. So... Your connection to Columbia plays a powerful role in your music in this album, um, very much so. And is it true that you recorded part of the album in Columbia? And it looks like the videos were shot there as well, or, or some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I did a lot of vocal recording in Columbia and in Brooklyn. I recorded a little bit, I think in like Beijing and Paris, and, and then it was just those. Um, and for me, going, you know, I moved to Colombia part time, just kind of spending very intentionally blocking out months where I would be there, or three week periods where I'd be there, which are a luxury to three weeks, like hello, um, and just putting my feet in the dirt and like breathing air, mountain air and and just relaxing like my expectations and like my fried like overproductive like like nonsense just kind of um it brought me to a different place and then just you know going to town and then just starting to meet people in a completely different context and then being, it's like all the same shit obviously um but yeah and then starting to talk a lot more and then catching up with my peers because like i speak a, a spanish from my father that's, it's like Bogota. From, he's born in 1958, so it has a certain flow. It has a certain vocabulary. You know, it's an idiomatic particularity. So when I roll up and we're all hanging, everyone's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool to then like refresh and then be, ooh, I like that way of saying things and starting to incorporate it and like, and it just becomes part of your thing, you know? And, and, I, and everybody has access to that in different parts of their own heritage and like, I think that's a cool thing, you know? I think a lot of people just like, like, oh, I'm American. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're really not, you know? And everyone forced us to be, or someone did, right? And like, whatever that is, and then Hollywood like really clamped it down for everyone. Like, talk about attacking you in your dreams and in waking life. So it's like, yeah, it, it was cool to then start building the sense of like that I'm going to comment on this in this album. Is that somewhere that you've been going your whole life? I know that your father is from there and you went as a child and now you, you still go there. Is, is that been a part of your life, your entire life? Yeah, we used to go to Bogota 
to visit my grandma and um and that was I think starting when I was like I was baptized there actually. I was baptized there and in Paris. And no one no one no one no one cared about Brooklyn. That was cool. But I was born in Carroll Gardens and then yeah, and then the fam- then the families were like, "He's got to come here," you know. Everyone was trying to out Catholic each other. It's like I'm like the most Catholic, you know. <laughs> social anxiety guilt <laughs> so baptized uh, twice so I, f- I feel that for re- what sorry baptized twice baptized twice hello so i don't know what we're talking about but it's it's that we come from a lot of different places and we think we know what that means and i think it's really fun to dig in and uh and then learn more about the things that that brought you to where you are today well Thinking about what brought you to where you are and the person that you've become, and you said that you're exploring a lot of different sides of yourself throughout this record. Can you tell me a little bit about that? There's three characters in the record, and they are basically reflective of my interests at the moment. Um, I really love a lot of different kinds of music, really intensely for different reasons and for all the same reason. So it was pretty simple to me. I was creating work that just could not be reconciled in one project. So I was like, cool, that's what we're going to do. And who are those characters? The characters? Well, we have like a, like a very, a very quietly disturbed intellectual. And he pops up mostly with um, the Impressionist. El Caprichoso, the one who the one who has his head in the books and who forgets to eat. Then you have um, the post-Prince Mutt, a debonair leading man. And he is trying to get funky at all costs. And that's what that is on the one. And, and really we, we, just a product of being American. Or of trying to be. So that then we have me discovering cumbia and salsa and, and like just realizing, whoa, like that's my connection to Africa, right? La clave. Um, el castellano is uh, an Islamic dialect of a North African language. So that's really astounding that to me that's not common knowledge or taught in schools. So it's no, it's no surprise that, that now we're seeing the, the intense proliferation of so-called Latinx culture, right? Um, it, it's, just, it's just another stop and everyone's just like consuming so much and, 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 and they want to dance and they want to love and they want to do all these things. So, so we're just moving through like what the world has to offer, you know? It's not that mysterious. And then... Then you get these w- wild cultural moments like Beyonce, J Bob. Have you heard about guy J Bob? It's like, oh shit! Like, like we're getting up now. Like, okay. And it's just for me to really be who I am. There wasn't a place for me as an indie or R and B. And so no matter how hard I tried, I was going to lose at that. And I was gonna, it was going to be like, oh yeah. So here's like here's the the roundup, and, and then that dude. Have you, yeah, I just how do you talk? Right. Okay. So you, and and I was like, that's I'm not going out like that. It's it's just, that's not enough, right? And that's not even who I am. That's not reflective of me. So I was like, how come your work isn't showing people more about you? And I was like, all right, there we go. That's a question for an artist. So I was like, let's get to work, boy. <laughs> and that's what we did. So then I was like, if you can't make a hit, don't even, don't even think about it. So then we made Aguita. And by we, I mean I did in the room for two years. I love that. So these aren't fictional characters, but are distinct facets of your personality. It sounds like you're becoming more comfortable saying, I don't give a crap. This is who I am. This is what I love. This is what I want to do. It makes me think about when I watch you perform in these videos. And definitely when I listen to the record, you're in love with this record, Aguita. (laughs) And, and, And what is the way that I've shown that? There is a passion um, that you can feel. It, it just translates through the music. Um, it, it feels like it's so genuine and so real. And, I mean, 
you're probably a really great actor. You might want to consider that one day I as mean, well. I got pretty far in a couple of things, yeah. You look like, I mean, you seem like you'd be a great actor, but I don't know. I don't feel like you're acting in those videos. You are, you're feeling it. You feel like the shit. <laughs> I don't know, the music make, maybe makes you feel that way. It feels like you're really happy with what you've made here. Yeah, I took my time and I really... put certain lessons that were, were really hard learned at the forefront of certain processes so that I could like get out of certain ruts. And then after that, we, it was very smooth. When you say that, it makes me wonder, did you have to give yourself some sort of little exercises or was it more of a sort of a allowing yourself to, to feel permission or more free? Yeah, it was permission. It was permission to like, to try to be the shit. <laughs> like what you just said, like, it, it, it was the embarrassment of not recognizing the dude who's trying to land that. It's all that in between. It's like, oh, long hair is dope, but then like when this is outgrown, what? So you got to like put a hat on and just just eat eat that and keep it keep it pushing. That's that's all there is to it. Every, every, everyone's going to be awkward before they're great. You know, I keep thinking about those. Um, distinct personalities that you just talked about. So when you were sequencing this record, which is masterful, by the way, what were your thoughts around sequencing? Because you kind of had these different styles of music that you mixed up. And did you think about how, well, obviously you thought about how you were going to put them together, but, but what did you think about that? You know, you could have just put them like in little blocks, but you didn't. You wove them like a thread through there. So I wanted each beginning to feel like, <gasps> like out of the last thing. And like, okay, cool. That was really good, but like this is the shit. So like I, I, I wanted that feeling of, of being refreshed by, by each, by the next selection basically, to, like a child. And, and also I wanted people to, to turn and be like, did, my, did I put this on shuffle? Or did, am I still listening to this record? Oh, okay. This track seven. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and I just didn't want it to be three of the same vibes because if the only thing we can say about ourselves is that we have no attention spans, which is bullshit, um, we're, we're such geniuses. Like, everyone take a break. You're using 10% of your brain. Like, relax. You can, you can, dig, you, you can, get, you can get deeper. And... I was like, okay, this is going to feel really cool. Like a soundtrack to a movie. And that's what it was. And so me and my spiritual advisor, Jackson Perry, <laughs> we, we made, he made a lot of options based on certain things that had to be like, this song is going to fall here. I wheat this got to be close to the end. Um, the beginning has, had to be tombs because it comes out of silence into bells. And then the tenth track, blue uh, blue dot, has to fade out. Perfect. Fill it in. I'm looking at the track list now, reminding myself what order everything goes in. Uh. Everything comes from silence, and everything comes from chaos. So I was like, all right, let's start with silence, and with silence, obviously. But let's take people from silence to not that to where we're going, really softly, and then everything in between is going to be like. You've actually described this album as a tasting menu, which I love. That's a great yes. description. Um, what What do you feel like you're giving folks a taste of? I guess that are the moments that I that, that I love the most about music. It's just it's just my favorite my favorite things, and and it all comes from me. And, and I want people to, to wonder why they can be trying different plates so close together and, and, um, and how those live together and how the, they, I think they represent really what people are like. I like that. You've talked about the desire to explore new genres of music after you'd become bored with music that you were making. Did producing Aguita satisfy that boredom for you? Yeah, absolutely. 
It was so fun. Like once I had that, once I had that aguita, I was like, okay, here we go. Just, you know, make sure you have more music like that. And then I was like, ooh, what's the next vibe we're going to go for? And I was like, ooh, un reggaeton. And then I was like, okay, we got to make it, we got to make it reggae though. So we got Sly and Robbie. Um, they sent us a couple of rhythms and that's how we did that. I was, I was at Ricky Rivera's house and then... I, so back then I didn't like sampling things and stretching them in logic and doing that. I mean, I had my own weird workflows, but I was like, I was like, but was me play stretch all this and make it like just the the loop that I could put drums on and so he did that for me and and then um then I started researching like what breaks and everything and put them all in and and then I wrote kind of a dance hall song in Spanish. Like with a melody, if you really hear like where the what kind of music it's coming from, like it's more like what you it's it's more Brooklyn to me than it is reggaeton. And then I borrowed a lot of like a modern language from like uh, Mike Towers and Bad Bunny and J Balvin, and then and Tiny was really big influence too, and Tego Calderon, who are huge. Obviously, I don't even need to like invoke them to to let people know like. But just just to say that, those are my teachers. It feels like the sky's the limit for you. You don't feel constrained by anything. If you ever did before, it seems like the <laughs> chains chains are off. What's next for you? Well, what's the next unfettered step? The next thing is uh, the clothing, because you have these suits that I'm presenting in the music videos are going to be for sale. And... Uh, the Aguita suit was with DNI and uh, two brothers who live in Paris, born in Peru. And then um, I'm cooking with Esteban Cortazar from Colombia, who lives in Paris also. Uh, so that so that, so there's clothes happening, and then just more music. I mean, I, I have a very exciting session tonight with, with two two really really popping dudes. Um, Nick Hakim, who's my brother, and, and <gasps> Follow my brother. Tell Nick and, we said uh, hello. We love him too. Yeah, I will. I will. I'll, I'll tell him that I shouted them out. And it's just to it's just to make a lot more music, and and that's that's what I've been doing. I mean, I have I have a huge pile of songs. Um, so so right now, um, the main thing is to learn how to finish things, because we're all problem we're all with that eighty percent, but that twenty percent that's your ass. So it's like. That's where you. That's where you start hitting the, that treadmill. Like just fuck. <laughs> I, I can't get over the hill. I can't say goodbye. I can't accept myself in this. So. So that's cool too, because then it's just like push it out the door. Prince was a huge first take fan, right? So clothes, more music, um, more videos, and um, yeah. I wanna. I wanna create a three dimensional pop culture so or not create it but i want to contribute to pop culture so as to create a little crack in the door where people can exist in 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 their tremendous multiplicity we're here for it we're ready for it uh gabriel thank you for putting so much love into the session it was absolutely beautiful and so wonderful to talk to you today can't wait to see what you're up to next thanks for your questions I like talking to you. Thank you. And um, yeah, enjoy everyone. Much love, peace and love only. Hydrate. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm about to keep practicing here. Maybe, maybe I can give you guys something. Oh, yes, I can. Love you. Love you too. It's Gabriel Garzón Montano, live on KEXP at home. Gota, gota.
Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.